Right, a few things to finish up here. Um, I suppose get uh, some of the less important stuff out of the way. Um, if you pass the exam and you do not have the requisite um, uh, number of years of experience, um, you can apply uh, to be what's referred to as an associate of ISC2 rather than a full member. Um, in either case, uh, every year you have to pay ISC2 $125 US in advance uh, for the maintenance of whatever level of certification you got. You've got to do CPEs, Continuing Professional Education. Um, it's 120 or you know 40 per year and they've got some fairly complicated additions these days as to uh, how many in any given year and how many of certain types and, and what have you. But basically 120 over a three year cycle. Uh, and that's, you know, hours of training um, that is uh, volunteer work in some cases if you become a... Um, you know, part of the executive of a local ISC2 chapter uh, or do other types of work for ISC2 if you get on uh, exam item writing uh, groups. That is a ton of fun. I, you know, if you can get into that, definitely uh, take advantage of that. Um, uh, other aspects... Um, back in the day, uh, ISC2 training, those of us who were on the instructor corps, we were volunteers. And so we got CPE credits for doing that. Um, various things. Anyways, it's, but, you know, it's supposed to be professional education. You are supposed to develop because, I mean, everybody argues about which field of technology changes fastest. I figure security's got a lock on it. The, uh, you know, anything that happens in technology has some implications for security. So you, you have to keep up with the field. You have to keep up with all the fields. You have to keep up with the technology and everything else that goes on around it. So, um, anywho, uh, those aspects. Um, when you are a member, you get to vote in board elections for the board of ISC2. Um, a lot of people figure the elections are sort of an exercise in futility. Uh, that's a political argument, but whatever. Um, yeah. However, uh, the larger target to talk about today is the domains. Now, um, used to be a 10 domain model, now it's an 8 domain model, that really doesn't make any difference. The, the actual contents are the same. The, the topics that are being covered, what you are supposed to know, um, uh, you know, the 8 domains versus 10 domains is just a, a rearrangement of the same contents. It's exactly the same. And, and by the way, it does not change very much over time. Because as I say, although you do have to know the technology, and the technology changes, you have to know the concepts. You have to know the principles. They don't change. I used to tell people when they were arguing about, you know, which kind of certification was better, if you want a job tomorrow, you go and take a SANS certificate. If you want to still have a job in 10 years, you go and take the CISSP. So, the, um, uh, the original 10 domains were, and we will be starting this as soon as I finish posting this particular piece. Uh, okay, security management, security architecture and models, access control, um, applications security, and, and particularly applications development. Operations security, that tends to be a bit of a catch-all anyways. Uh, physical security, cryptography, telecommunications and networking, business continuity and disaster recovery, 
and law, investigation, and ethics. Um, that was the original 10 domain structure. Now the eight domains are security and risk management, asset security, security engineering, communications, identity and access management, security assessment and testing, security operations, and security in the software development lifecycle. So you can see some of the, the similarities there, but a few differences. And um, the rearrangement, uh, the old 10 domain structure, um, the topics that were covered there and how they were arranged, um, from my perspective, it's academically cleaner. It's easier to structure what you're doing. And so I stick with the, the 10 domain model. It's, it's easier to build the course that way to make sure that you cover everything. Uh, and to make sure you don't duplicate stuff. The, um, the eight domain structure does represent security more holistically and that is more realistic in terms of the actual practice of security and uh, how we do our jobs. Um, but it does have a, a lot of duplication in the areas. Um, as, as I mentioned, that, that does kind of work to your advantage sometimes. When you go to do the uh, experience, uh, you can probably get away with a single job um, uh, covering uh, two or three domains or even more uh, depending on, on what goes in there because of the duplication in, in different areas in, in those eight domains and, and the model. Uh, so uh, that is about it for getting started. Um, we will uh, be starting on security management as soon as I get uh, this posted. And uh, you will uh, get into the actual details of, of what you need to know. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and, and one thing struck me uh, this morning. I'm doing it in this 10-minute bit chunks. Um, the advantage of taking this seminar, as opposed to some of the other seminars, any other seminar... Uh, where you take 40 hours in a big chunk all in one week, is you can take this seminar on your coffee break. Which brings to mind a uh, comment which I think Howard Schmidt made one time, that uh, most companies spend more on coffee than they do on security. And he went in on to say that if you spend more money on coffee than on security, uh, you are going to be hacked. And what's more, you deserve to be hacked. So, you know, bear that in mind. Um, you are entering into a very important field. You are playing a very important part in any organization. Um, there is an awful lot here that is of advantage to the company. Welcome to the community. And we'll get started on security management in the next session.